aliens. Is there life somewhere else in the universe? Well, there are billions of galaxies that we can see, each with billions of planets. So lots of smart people think it's basically certain that on some distant world there's someone wondering that very same question. If the universe is truly infinite, then there should even be infinitely many civilizations out there. And yet, we've somehow managed to find exactly zero aliens at all. Well, because the channel 3 Blue 1 Brown is running a contest for math explainers, today we're going to take a look at a kind of number that is a lot like aliens in that we think there should be literally infinitely many of them, but we somehow haven't found any, and not for lack of trying. They have the whimsical name of Wall Sun Sun Primes, and they're connected to one of the most famous problems in the history of math. Let's explore. If you're well versed in fancy math words, the one sentence description of a wall sun sun prime is a prime number p such that the Fibonacci sequence has the same minimal period length modulo p and modulo p squared. If you're scratching your head at what all that means, or perhaps why anyone cares, let's start out with a little game. One of the neat things about math is that sometimes a literal game for literal children can lead you straight to the frontiers of human knowledge, and that's the case for the wall sun sun primes. The game, which comes from the book Math for Smarty Pants, goes like this. Write down two numbers, say 8 and 9. Add them together and take only the last digit, so in this case 7, and write it down to the right. Now you take the rightmost two numbers, 9 and 7, and do the same thing again, so 6. Keep going like this until you get back to the two numbers you started with, and see how long it takes. For 8 and 9, after 12 steps we get back to where we started. You can try this with lots of different numbers. 8 9 took 12 steps, but 9 8 takes 60. 0 5 is pretty boring, beaten out only by 0 0. Now, you might be wondering, why do these sequences always loop back to where they start? Basically, there are only so many pairs of numbers that could show up next to each other in the sequence, so at some point the sequence has to repeat itself. Wherever that happens, you can just calculate the sequence backwards by subtraction, until you get back to the pair you started with. Okay, let's do one more loop starting at 0, 1. Something fun happens. Notice it? It's the last digits of the Fibonacci sequence, which makes sense because that sequence is made by the same recursive adding process, just keeping all the digits. Another mathy thing to note is that keeping just the last digit is the same as taking the remainder when you divide by 10, or in fancy math words, modulo, or mod 10. And there's nothing stopping us from doing this with a number that isn't 10. We could do the Fibonacci numbers mod 8, for example, taking the remainder of each number when we divide by 8. Mod 8, the sequence repeats after 12 steps, whereas mod 10 it was 60. So 8-fingered aliens would be done with this game much faster. Since we're not actually the first people in history to do this, there's already a name for these loop lengths. Pisano periods, named after Fibonacci's hometown of Pisa. They're usually written with the Greek letter pi, just because it makes a p sound and not anything to do with the circle constant pi. So the Pisano period of 10, or pi of 10, is 60, because the Fibonacci loop mod 10 has length 60. Similarly, pi of 8 is 12. We could do some more by hand, or we could write a super janky Python script and have the computer do it for us. Here are the Pisano periods of all the numbers from 1 to 60. We've got some patterns here. First, everything past 2 gives an even number. Second, it looks like, for instance, all the multiples of 5 give multiples of 20, which is the value for 5, and the same goes for the multiples of any number. There's a good reason for this. If a number is divisible by a multiple of 5, say 30, it must also be divisible by 5. So once the Fibonacci sequence gets back to 0, 1 modulo 30, it must also be at 0, 1 modulo 5, which means it's gone through a whole number of loops mod 5, in this case 6 of them. Anytime we're dealing with a pattern based on multiples of smaller numbers, as a math person that immediately makes me want to look at the primes since they aren't multiples of any smaller numbers, besides one that is. Prime numbers are also useful for getting Jodie Foster to talk to you if you're the aliens from Contact. The idea of examining the primes also crossed the mind of Donald Dines Wall, 
who first looked at Pisano periods with a computer back in 1960. Wall figured out that the Pisano period of a number n was the least common multiple of the Pisano periods of the highest prime powers that were factors of n. So for instance, 360 is 2 cubed times 3 squared times 5, so pi of 360 is the least common multiple of pi of 8, 12, pi of 9, 24, and pi of 5, 20, which is 120. So now we only need to know the Pisano periods of numbers that are powers of primes. Luckily, Donald Wall had a more complicated formula, this one, for pi of a power of a prime, given pi of the prime itself. This formula can be reduced to this simpler one, so long as the prime in question doesn't have exactly the same Pisano period as its square. This was the case for all the primes Wall's early computer could calculate. But the question remained. Was there an exception somewhere past where Wall could calculate? Wall's guess was that the answer was no, but he wasn't sure because some related kinds of primes were already known to exist. This question was put on the proverbial mathematical backburner for a while until the twin brothers Zhe Hong and Zhe Wei Sun brought them into the spotlight in 1992. The Sun twins managed to show that if a prime number was an exception to the first case of Fermat's last theorem, it would have to be an exception to Wall's conjecture as well. This was absolutely huge. Fermat's last theorem had sat around unproven since 1637, and was considered one of the great unsolved mathematical mysteries. The theorem states that there are no three positive integers a, b, and c, such that a to the n plus b to the n equals c to the n, for any whole number n greater than 2. It's basically the Pythagorean theorem's evolved form. The first case just means that n can't divide a times b times c. So, thanks to the Suns, the search for these so-called Walson Sun primes became a search for a potential counterexample to the greatest unsolved problem in all of math, which got everyone super jazzed to look for some, and they sat out with their computers and searched higher and higher, and then Andrew Wiles came along and proved Fermat's last theorem in 1994. So, yeah, now there's no point in looking for a counterexample. But although Wiles proved that Fermat's last theorem had no counterexamples, he didn't rule out the possibility that a wall sun sun prime could exist anyway, and by that time people had gotten interested in wall sun sun primes for their own sake. So the searches continued. The latest project is up to 20 digits and still hasn't found one. So why haven't we given up? Well, like I teased with the aliens thing, there's a pretty good statistical argument that there should be infinitely many wall sun sun primes. It goes like this. If a prime p has a Pisano period of k, then the kth Fibonacci number, which we write f sub k, has remainder 0 when you divide it by p. That means that its remainder when you divide it by p squared is some multiple of p, between 0 times p and p minus 1 times p. Since there are p possibilities, if there is an equal chance of it being any of those, there is a 1 in p chance that it's 0 times p, or exactly 0 which is what it needs to be if p squared also has a Pisano period of k. It's not too hard to prove that if f sub k is 0 mod p squared, then the next Fibonacci number, f sub k plus 1, has to be 1 mod p squared. We won't do the whole proof here, but the trick is to calculate the Fibonacci sequence backwards mod p squared until you get to the beginning. This would make the Pisano period of p squared also k. So any prime p should have a 1 over p chance of being a wall sun sun prime. And as we conveniently showed in my last math explainer, the sum of 1 over all the primes goes off to infinity. So statistically, there should be infinitely many wall sun sun primes. So just how unlucky are we that we haven't found one yet? Well, only a little. The sum of 1 over the primes goes off to infinity very slowly. Since we've searched up to 20 digit numbers, statistically we should have found about 4 of them, and there's about a 5% chance that there's one that's exactly 20 digits long. But a nice thing about numbers is that we will literally never run out of them, and unless someone proves that they can't exist, there could always be a Walson Sun Prime hiding in the next digit, or maybe the next galaxy. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>